I like to choose those words carefully because exactly. there are some people that's dealing with some serious depression, and I don't ever want to undermine what they're dealing with. Because there's different uh, levels. Right. But I, I think I was dealing with slight depression at probably the height of my career with No Limit. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I'm proud of him. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm proud of the old me. I mean, Shell Shock was was recorded by a 20-year-old that was completely out of his mind. <laughs> and I am so proud of him because he was a reflection of my wildest dreams at that mm. time. And um, as a grown man, now when I put it on, I can look back and say, yeah. I did that. I did that. Wow. I, did that. I think I thank God for the fact of how you understand evolution. You live in it. You live in it. You yeah, know. You have to. But but at the end of the day, some people get lost in the sauce. That's why you have people that have recidivism where they go back right. into the system. It really mentally messes with a lot of people to of where you course. can't you can't function without those stipulations that we faced. You right. know. So a lot of them go back into that with with a lot of different things. When you look at like uh, depression. When, right. You know, mental illness when they struggling to understand uh, the way they lost loved ones when they was gone. Right, all type of stuff that hadn't happened. Their kids was the, you, they feel like they 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 was not there for their kids. They, right. A lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, and and even I didn't know what depression was until um, I started learning about it in prison, and I realized that I was once depressed. Mm. Like I didn't know I wasn't depressed as much in prison. But while in prison and learning about depression, I began to understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling before I got locked up. So yeah, it was it was it was interesting. It was interesting. So you were going through depression before you got locked up. Yeah, I was actually um, dealing with dealing with a and and I like to um, I like to choose those words carefully because exactly. there are some people that's dealing with some serious depression. And I don't ever want to undermine what they're dealing with. Because there's different uh, levels. Right. But I, I think I was dealing with slight depression at mm -hmm. probably the height of my career with No Limit. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was, um, it was interesting. I didn't know it at the time. But when I started learning more about depression, then I was like, oh, so that's what I was dealing with. And I think it just came from me um, as a child, you know, thinking and believing that, okay, when I get this amount of money or when I when I'm able to do this for my family, it will solve all of whatever I'm dealing with, right? And I think that the uh, beauty in that is even a poor man, at least he has the hope mm -hmm. that money will make him happy. But what happens to the man who has the money and he's still not happy? He go blow his brains out. That's right. Because he don't he don't see any other um or they, some of them turn to drugs. Right, or they turn to drugs, or they, they just, because they don't really understand, okay, I've, I've done all of this, and I'm still feeling empty, now what? And I started learning that about myself, that at that time, um, yeah, you, I was going through that. And oddly enough, some of the best works of art come from that, mm -hmm. because... World War Three was a product of that. Right. Wow. And it's so crazy because then I love the fact that you said that because there's so many other kids out here who are watching you and I heard so many talk where, oh, I just need to get money. I need to get to this point right. where I can and I feel like I'll be happy. But we've always heard the saying that money <laughs> do not buy happiness. No, you know what I mean? But they'll say, well, it'll solve a lot of my problems. But what do you prefer? Do you prefer your problems to be solved or true inner peace? Right. You know what I mean? Wow. And and that's and I and I guess that goes back to America. <laughs> <laughs> money seriously, money will not solve every problem. I'm a person who believes that money only gives a light to who you really are. Example, I believe some people are humble simply because they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you give that person some access? They would show out. In many cases, they acting like who ain't mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So it's, I call it the honey bun theory, like. Let's say I'm walking down a, uh, a tier in the prison and I see two guys 
in the cell, and they both are hungry, and they've been there together for the past week, and, you know, they're both hungry. One of them sleep. The other one is up. And I say, here, man, take this honey bun, bro, for you and your cellar. Now, the good dude is going to wake his cellar up and make sure he has a half of that honey bun because he know that him and his cellar have been in there starving for the last couple of days. But see that other dude? He going to eat it and not tell him nothing about it. Ain't going to tell him it's nothing. It's over. Bury that. And I look at people like that who you give money to. They got some celebrities and stars that are those kind of people. Mm -hmm. Wow. I want to have both kinds, but you have some yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.